Father, we thank you today. We praise you and worship you and bless you. Manifest yourself today among your people. We thank you that you, by your spirit, you said it when you were on the earth. You said, it's the Father that dwelleth within me. He does the works. Well, the same Father is dwelling within us today. And the healing mercies of God are here. And we praise you and thank you for that. And we give you all the praise and all the honor. And we ascribe all the honor and the glory to the matchless, wonderful, powerful name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And we praise you and thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. You may be seated. I have some things that the Lord is giving me to say today. And uh, first of all, well, you can go ahead and open your Bibles to the 91st Psalm. And uh, the uh, <clears throat> meeting was had closed. And Oral Roberts had laid his hands on a lot of people. And he walked out <clears throat> and, went at, and he, when he got outside, there was a little boy waiting for him. And then he said, <clears throat> are you Oral Roberts? He said, yes, I am. He said, I'm supposed to be healed today. And Oral said to him, he said, son, I am exhausted and the anointing has left me. And, but he said, and, and, and uh, Willie said, I don't know about all that, but I know I'm supposed to be healed today. <laughs> And so Oral laid hands on him and he was healed that day. Completely, totally healed and grew up to be a mighty man of God. Thank you, Jesus. You're supposed to be healed today. You're supposed to be healed today. You're supposed to, healed today. You're supposed to prosper today. You're supposed to be in good health today. Praise God. Now, let me talk to you about this for a moment. Now, the 90th Psalm, Moses was crying out to God in intercession. And uh, Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations before the mountains were brought forth. <clears throat> or ever thou hast formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You turn men to destruction and say, as return ye children of men for a thousand years in your sight as yesterday, <clears throat> when it is past and as a watch in a night, you carry them away with a flood. And they are asleep in the morning. They're like grass, which grows up. In the morning, it flourishes and grows up. And he comes on, he's crying out, because of what's happening out here in the wilderness. Now, you can go back and check this out in the book of Numbers. I'll just paraphrase it. I'm through with these people. Now, nobody over 20 is going to get out of here alive. And they've been dying off at 70 and, and even 80. But he was crying out. He was interceding for them. Well, that never has been. And it's been adopted as 
And I've heard people say, I heard Brother Hagin say it. We've only been promised 70 or 80 years. That's not right. So, let's see. Hold your place there. Let's see what is right. Let's go to Genesis. Chapter 6. It came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born unto them. The sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair. They took them wives of all that they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man for he is also flesh, yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty years. Now, God said that. And Moses was crying out because of this. Well, now you come right over to the 91st Psalm and, and listen what Moses did with that. Now, when you know who wrote the Psalm before it, then there's no t title on the next one, then that person wrote that one. Well, they fit. He that dwells in the secret place. Wait, let's, let's come down. Oh, satisfy us early with thy mercy that we may rejoice and be glad in our days. Make us glad according to the days wherein thou hast afflicted us and the years wherein we have seen evil. Let thy work appear unto the servants and your glory unto the children. Let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon us and establish thou the work of our hands upon us, yea, the work of the hands that establish this. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of Almighty Shaddai. Amen. He cried out and then he fixed it. Now this is called the soldier song. And I'll talk about that in a moment. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high. I was crying out to God one day. And God, and I picked up a, an old Pentecostal hymn, Send the Power Just Now. I shouldn't have done it. <laughs> I, just, I, I shouldn't put it that way. Send the power just now. And I was in a particular situation and we needed healing and not a lot of things. And <laughs> I heard it on here. He said, where am I going to get it? I said out loud, I said, sir. He said, where am I going to get it? I can't look up to somebody else and say, Kenneth needs power. He said, I'm in you right now. And he said, I'm all the power you need. <laughs> yes, sir. Now, this psalm is written in a very unique way. And it, it doesn't really make a lot of sense until you establish who is speaking. The first record we have of this in World War I, a commander, a field commander, ordered his men, this is where it got its name, the soldier psalm, to memorize this psalm. They had no casualties. Now, a longtime partner of ours, Keith Kerber, pastors in Alaska, and he's special forces, army ranger. And uh, he, we were in Alaska. And uh, so uh, he asked me, uh, when Gloria and I were there, and, and he and uh, Nola, 
he said, I'm about to be deployed and um, lay hands on me, please. So I told him about this. And he said he was, they called him back because of, of a particular unit that was taking so many casualties. So I reminded him of that. And I said, now, instruct every man under your command to memorize this psalm. Memorize it. And um, so you walk up and say, verse 4, he shall cover you with his feathers. Immediately. They memorized it. And I said, when you get back, let me know what happened. I said, call me. So, and then I forgot about it. <laughs> and the phone rang one night about around three o'clock in the morning and, and Gloria answered it and then she handed it to me and it was Keith. He said, I couldn't wait. I need to call you. I didn't lose anybody. I didn't have any casualties. But he said, now let, I want to ask you a question though. He said, when I left, you know, new commander, he was replaced. When I left, the unit began to take casualties once more, but not as many as when I was there. Why? I said, Keith, that's, that's simple. The incoming commander didn't demand that. Some of your soldiers kept it up. Some of them didn't, and it cost them. It's that simple. Not a casualty. Two years in Afghanistan. Give the Lord a praise. He that dwells, he that lives in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty, the shadow of Shaddai. Now look, person number one, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him I will trust. That was my part. And that's the last thing I said. I release my faith. Now Jesus comes on the scene. Surely he shall deliver you, Kenneth, from the snare of the fowler and from the noise and pestilence. Pestilence. Plagues. COVID. Pandemics. He shall cover you, Kenneth, with his feathers, and under his wings shall you trust. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. Now, I'm a soldier now. You shall not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flies by day. No, sir, I will not. Nor for the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor for the destruction that wastes at noonday. No, sir, I won't. Kenneth, a thousand shall fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with your eyes shall you behold and see the reward of the wicked. Like a bad movie. <laughs> Only with your eyes. <laughs> well, I done preached me happy. Glory to God. Now listen, this bears out the revelation that the Lord gave me this. Because you, Kenneth, have made the Lord, which is my refuge, that proves it was Jesus. Because you, Kenneth, have made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high your habitation, there shall no evil befall you, neither shall any plague come nigh your dwelling. For he 
shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all of your ways. Now notice, all of this from verse 3 down to here, angels are involved in this. Angels are keeping you in all of this. That, that, it's the angels that are carrying out the commands of the Father. Are you with me now? Yes. Are you, do you have joy? Yes. Well, let your face know it. <laughs> For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all of your ways. They shall bear thee up in, they, Kenneth, they're going to bear you up in their hands lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the adder and the young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet. Now here comes the father himself. Because Kenneth and Gloria have set their love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he's known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver and honor him. And with long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. And that's based on 120 years. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now you can take that right there and just begin receiving your healing, whatever it is right now. So we begin with that and you flow down into the 92nd Psalm. It's a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises unto your name, O Most High, to show forth the loving kindness, the chesed, in the morning and your faithfulness every night. Yeah. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So, say this. Healing belongs to me. And I receive it. Now, let's go over to Mark chapter 6. And uh, he went out from there and came into his own country and his disciples followed him. And when the Sabbath day was come, he began to teach in the synagogue. Many hearing him were astonished, saying, From whence hath this man these things? And what wisdom is this which is given unto him that even such mighty works are wrought by his hands? Is, this, is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James and Joseph and Judah and Simon? Are, the, are not his sisters here with us? And they were offended at him. But Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honor, but in his own country and among his own kin and his own house. And he could there do no mighty work save he laid his hands upon a few sick folk. Actually, uh, Bavis W. Vine says people with minor ailments. And healed them. And he marveled because of their unbelief and he went around about the villages teaching. Because that's the cure for unbelief. <laughs> Amen. What is unbelief? Zero faith. It's not little faith. It's just zero. <laughs> so there's not any of that in here today. No, 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 none out there. Now, some of you watching this may be new to you. You mean Jesus could not, didn't say he would not, said he could not. He couldn't do it. Well, I thought Jesus could do anything, not without faith. Faith is the great connector. All right, let's again get a definition of faith, and I want, I want to do it from the uh, classic amplified translation again. And, um, okay. Y'all going to put it up on the screen? There it is. Now faith, is, when is faith? Now. 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 
Say now. 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 You can't say now a while ago. Every time you said now, it just updated. Now faith is the assurance, the confirmation, the title deed of the things we hope for being the proof. Say being the proof. Proof. Proof of things we do not see and the conviction of their reality, faith perceiving as a real fact what is not revealed to the senses. Hallelujah. Faith, the creative force of Almighty God. And it's there the moment you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, that faith was there. You can find it in the book of Ephesians. We're saved by faith through grace. It is the gift of God. Well, Brother Copeland, is the faith the gift or the grace? Both of them. (laughs) We find that over in the book of Romans, the fourth chapter. Therefore, it is of faith so that it might be by grace. So by faith, we receive the grace of God. Now, there, as, you, as, you, as you deal with this, we realize that anyone in, that's in Christ is a new creature. New creation. And you are a unique person. Think about it. And all of the billions and who knows how many people have gone before you and before me, there never has been from Adam until now one just like you. Amen. Amen. So this is a good time to praise him. So now then, I want to go to Proverbs chapter 3. And let me just read this to you in the, in the Amplified. My son, forget not my law or teaching. Let your heart keep my commandments. Listen now. For length of days and years of life worth living and tranquility, inward and outward, continuing through old age till death, these shall they add to you. His teaching. It'll add years to a life worth living. This is Amy from Sacramento, and she had a condition, a very painful condition on the bottom of her feet called plantar fasciitis, and she is completely healed. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. It's so, it was so painful um, when I wake up in the morning. I have to tiptoe because I, I could cry from the pain. And I was sitting there, my legs were shaking. I couldn't control it anymore. And I was massaging my heels, touching, and there's no more pain. Oh, glory to God. And you're a mom of three. Mama, she's a mom of three, Brother Copeland. And the pain was so severe. And for 10 years, she's had this. And I said, did you check it? She's like, she was squeezing her feet, and there's no more pain. Oh. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Brother Copeland, this is Melody from Tarzana, California. She arrived here on Thursday with swelling in her legs. She sat in the meeting. She was believing God for healing. She got up this morning and went to the gym for over an hour, totally healed. (laughs) Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, so uh, my name is George McGee. I had a bad case of contact dermatitis, and I was just broken out for, for two months because I moved from one county to another. My insurance, I couldn't use it, so I had to believe God. And I came here today, and just now I felt a breakthrough, and I went in the bathroom, and I looked, and man, it's dried up. It's dried up in the name of <laughs> Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise Hallelujah. 
That's what we talk Glory about an instant miracle right there. The world system is unstable, but God's faith system is reliable and has all your needs covered. Length of days and years of a life worth living come from God. In How to Get Well, Stay Well, and Enjoy Life, Gloria Copeland explains how faith works for you and spells out what Scripture says about health and wholeness. The more you know the Word, the freer you are and the more joy you have. The Bible is very clear that God's plan for you is wholeness in every area, spirit, soul, and body. Take authority over your life, over your body and health. Speak the Word. Jesus is the beginner and finisher of your faith. He doesn't start things that He won't complete. Faith takes what is promised in the Word and doesn't let go. Consistency is the key to receiving everything that God has for you. The moment you pray, believe you have received your wholeness and deliverance, and the Bible promises that you will have what you need and more. God promises every good thing in His Word. Be sure to request your free How to Get Well, Stay Well, and Enjoy Life series from Kenneth Copeland Ministries at kcm.org slash TV special or call 800-600-7395. Use your faith to take the good health and total well-being God declares belong to you. Offer is good for 60 days. Outside the U.S., shipping charges may apply. Contact your regional office for more information. Hello, I'm Spencer Nordyke. This week is Healing School on the Believer's Voice of Victory, and Kenneth and Gloria Copeland want to give you something to help you live healed and well. It's called How to Get Well, Stay Well, and Enjoy Life. God has promised us every good thing in His Word, and that includes having divine health and living a good life. You don't have to put up with living with sickness and disease. Through Jesus, you can have complete wholeness in your spirit, soul, and body. Get this free series and renew your mind to the Word of God. It's available on CD, DVD, or as a digital download. Go to kcm.org to receive your free copy. If you've never attended a healing school service, I want to invite you to come to the next one. It'll be at the Omaha Victory Campaign in Omaha, Nebraska, Saturday morning on October 29th. The entire event is October 27th through 29th, so make your plans to be there from the beginning to build your faith so you can receive your healing on Saturday morning. It's three days of praise and worship and the preaching of the Word of God with Brother Copeland and Jerry Savell. Come and hear the good news of the gospel. Remind yourself of the unfailing power of God. We're going to have a great time and partners want to see you there. This is a free event, so register today at kcm.org. We'll see you again tomorrow. And until then, this is Spencer Nordyke reminding you that God loves you, we love you, and Jesus is Lord. Find out more about Kenneth Copeland Ministries and how we can help you grow in faith. Visit our website, kcm.org.